Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome uh, to uh, the latest in a series of uh, webinars uh, brought to you by the Health and Safety Executive and from the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. Um, the focus again today is regulating chemicals uh, after the transition period. And my name is Matthew Penrose, and I'll be your host uh, for the, this session this morning, where I'll be joined by a number of expert colleagues from the Health and Safety Executive and from DEFRA. So since the referendum of 2016, we've been hosting a number of uh, events to support uh, businesses, NGOs, all people who are interested in working and understanding what the new regulations that will uh, apply uh, and of course this is the first event where we're actually going to be discussing the regulations that are actually now in force in Great Britain and in Northern Ireland because as we're all aware at the end of last year uh, we uh, there's a number of significant milestones achieved uh, in the uh, in the Brexit um, uh, negotiations we had a trade and cooperation agreement agreed between the UK and the EU. We also had confirmation of how the Northern Ireland Protocol will work and they obviously complement the withdrawal agreement that was negotiated some time before that. But the main substantive change is that on the 1st of January we had a suite of new uh, regulations come into force uh, in Great Britain. Uh, the impact on uh, the supply and use of chemicals uh, in Great Britain and obviously what we wanted to explore with you today and understand is, uh, help you understand, is the implications of what those um, regulations mean. And of course, this is about making sure that society uh, still has access to the beneficial chemicals that it needs, but also to ensure that workers, the public and the environment remain protected and those chemicals remain appropriately regulated. So, uh, could I have the next slide, please, um, I think. So here's the agenda for uh, the next uh, three hours. Um, we're going to be focusing on uh, four of the key regimes that uh, are own that, that, that HSE and DEFRA have the policy responsibility for, and for which the Health and Safety Executive will be the will be the primary regulator. We're going to talk about the REACH regulations. We're going to talk about the Plant Protection Products regulations, classification, labelling, and packaging and also biocidal products regulations. Uh, we've chosen those four because they are the four that we keep getting uh, lots of questions and comments about through our various different engagement fora, and also because we think these are the important ones for uh, this webinar today. It's not to say that there aren't any other ones such as prior informed consent or detergents, it's just that we really wanted to focus on these key uh, issues today. So how the session is going to run, I'll hand over very shortly to uh, Dr Richard Daniels, who to put some introductory remarks. But what we're going to have is a series of um, uh, short presentations followed by a Q&A session in this main plenary room, this main room that we're in today. I will continue to host that through the session. But the feedback from the last session that we did from before Christmas is that some uh, delegates uh, would find real value in extending that Q&A session. So what we've got uh, and what you have access to functionality wise is you've got access to breakout rooms. So um, what we're going to do is that we're going to stay in the main plenary room um, uh, until the end of the REACH uh, session. And then what I'll do is I'll talk you through, you can actually flip between this room and then a breakout room where Alan Williams and other REACH colleagues will be sitting in a different room and we'll continue that uh, Q&A with you uh, should you wish to do that. So the way to do that is on your panel. There's a toggle on the left hand side, which talks about the main live stream room and the breakout rooms. And when it comes to that time around 11 o'clock, we'll, we'll be supporting you to move across there. You can sit in both rooms if you want, because um, obviously if you're in the breakout room, uh, the main session will be continuing. But just to remind everybody, as per last time, this whole event will be recorded. It will be uploaded back onto the website uh, within uh, within the week uh, and people can access that. So if you had a particular question that you wanted on reach, you wanted to go to the breakout room, it meant that you missed a few of uh, Rachel's sessions on pesticides. You can watch that later, but you can flip between the two. The only advice I would give is that obviously if you're running two live streams at the same time, uh, your bandwidth may um, uh, you need the bandwidth to do that, but, but but try that and see how that goes. 
Um, we're going to be taking questions. Uh, all the mic mics are muted, so this is really an interactive event through text. We'll be taking questions through uh, the functions that you can write the questions in. I know some of you have been submitting questions over recent days, and we'll try and pull some of those key themes out uh, and answer those. We won't be um, able to respond to everybody directly. I know there's a lot of uh, important questions that people have, but we won't be able to respond directly after the event. I'm sure you'll appreciate we've got we've got many hundreds and hundreds of questions that will come in. But what we will do is look at those, review them, and try and update the guidance and improve where we think there are any gaps. But also throughout the session, we'll be actually um, highlighting some of our help desks uh, and helplines. So if you do actually have a really burning uh, question that you really do need answering, and if it's not picked up today, please do make sure that you contact the relevant help desk and they will triage that and prioritise that uh, to give you the, the answer uh, that you need. Uh, just got a quite note, I know we have a, a couple of uh, journalist colleagues uh, that are obviously interested in, 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 in the today's session. Absolutely great that you're here. Look forward to working with you. I think that the, the ask of the journalists uh, on the call is if you do have any particular inquiries that you'd like, please can you use the media inquiries uh, email address at the bottom so our media team can, can work with you and get the answers you need and keep the, keep, uh, the help desk scientists and technical experts um, kind of focused on supporting businesses over the next uh, few weeks. So uh, we will have a comfort break at around uh, 11.30 and then we'll get you away uh, by, by one. So hopefully you'll find it informative. We know that the feedback from the last uh, meeting that it, that it was. Um, so um, without further ado, I'll hand you over to uh, Dr Richard Daniels for his opening remarks. Thank you, Matt. And can I extend a very warm welcome to you all to another uh, major webinar event that we are hosting. And uh, what a great attendance, I think, uh, just before coming into the session, there were over 500 people on and there's probably more than that now. For those of you that haven't encountered me, so I'm the director of the Chemicals Regulation Division in HSE and I've been in post since March last year. And I have the responsibility for all of the functions in the division. So not just operational delivery, but also policy functions that have been working very hard, as you would imagine, in terms of uh, Brexit and what the future was looking like. And at the outset, um, can I just sort of state the commitment that I have colleagues in CRD and HSC have alongside DEFRA, the Environment Agency and other government departments to work as hard as we are able to, to support and guide you now uh, that we're in the new environment after the transition period has ended. There was a tremendous amount of work over uh, many months, and in some cases years, preparing uh, for what the future would be after the referendum result. And that's giving us a, a very good base on which to help and support you now that in 2021 we are uh, a sovereign nation free of uh, membership of the European Union. And this seminar and the investment in it is a, is a demonstration, I believe, of the support of that commitment. For those of you that may have been on the webinar, uh, may have heard it, but if not, one of my aims as director was to make sure that we had as seamless a transition as possible as we moved out of the transition period and into uh, January and be as ready as we could be to help and support you. And our arrangements in, in HSC were independent of whatever the outcome of that deal was, and therefore we are in a good position. So the good news is we do have uh, a trade and cooperation agreement. So for the sector, there are no tariffs, uh, there are no quotas. So that is very positive. Um, but a full recognition that uh, not everything that the UK wanted uh, was achieved. So it is clear, uh, you know, there will be additional costs uh, of processes and interactions with the EU. Um, the deal did not include data sharing access, particularly for reach data, et cetera. Um, and the EU has been very clear that that is a benefit for member states and not to be extended to, to third countries. So that's the starting point. We have to operate within that environment. So what those costs will be, how that will operate, will clearly become uh, evident as we move forward and government will be looking to see what support it can provide, I'm sure, to industry. And we will be looking as to how we can assist as the regulator in that new environment. So 
a recognition, some very, very uh, big challenges facing, but also some opportunities for the sector and for our country as we go forward. But today is really about the regulations that are now in place, the practical impact of them and assisting you to comply with them. So it's not a forum for sort of discussions really or comments about some of those bigger issues, not to dismiss them. But I would suggest that today isn't the place for those to be aired. Uh, this is about helping you with the practicalities and answering your immediate questions. So working alongside the Environment Agency with DEFRA, with the devolved administrations in England, Scotland and supporting uh, Northern Ireland, uh, my focus now is to how will HSC operate as the independent standalone chemicals regulator and making sure we are aiming towards being as efficient and as effective as we can going forward and maintaining a lot of the very good track record we have as that uh, regulator uh, in the previous uh, scenario when we were members of the European Union. So building on the good that we had, but aiming to be the best. So we are starting from a point where a lot of the processes and the legislation hasn't changed. Uh, the environment and the authorities uh, have changed but not in terms of the requirements and the principles that was lifted and shifted from EU into GB uh, and UK legislation. We will need investment in HSE, but my aim is that I can transform our performance to be a high performing, globally respected and globally connected regulator in the new environment that we find ourselves. So I'm very keen, for example, to explore what the, chemi uh, the chemical annex does offer us in terms of regulatory cooperation. Uh, I want to be exploring how we can continue to maintain links both with uh, European member states bilaterally or collectively and through other forums, for example, the OECD, the United Nations and other mechanisms. So really what we have to do is make sure that we have a strong infrastructure that replaces that that we had uh, in Europe and the, ro and the role of the ECHA played. We are not setting out to replicate ECHA in terms of all of the functions uh, and the size and scale of its workforce, but we need to do what we need to do to operate effectively in Great Britain and to support Northern Ireland. I'll just say as part of that, uh, it's clear that we won't automatically be following uh, European Union decisions, but we will be tracking them very closely. Uh, we need to know what is happening in Europe and decisions that they are making, and we have to see what connections we, we can make to see what is coming up. Uh, that's important, uh, not so we can automatically follow, but to consider the impact and implications for GB. Uh, and and uh, clearly Northern Ireland will be following uh, EU and that interface between Northern Ireland and ourselves. Um, but also because we are starting from a position of close alignment, uh, what that means for decisions that may be making across the, the English Channel and the Irish Sea, what that means for us and what impact that may have on divergence. And that's not just on any individual decision, but that's broadly on what's the approach that Europe has taken and if they change some of their methodologies, etc. But in terms of some uh, closer to home and perhaps more immediate priorities, we have delivered the building blocks in place that we could function on the 1st of January. And I know that uh, some of you are interacting with them. And for example, through the REACH IT registration systems that DEFRA have led on. So we will be looking to develop our IT and digital platforms. We will be looking to recruit further to strengthen our basis. We've recruited over 100 people, joined HSC specifically for chemicals uh, that are, are onboarding now coming into to, to the division during this month. And we will continue to streamline processes where we are able to and if possible, to speed up some of our work. So um, if I can just um, really sort of assess that we are in the live environment, uh, we are operating for real, you need to come to grips with the regulatory requirements and how to deliver that. And as Matt said today, is very much geared towards trying to give you more certainty and answer any questions that you have on how to do that. 
and also if there are things that we haven't yet addressed to almost put those on the to-do list where we are able to do uh, to see how we can further improve it. Just at high level, I talked about today's not the forum for, for discussions about some of the bigger strategic issues, but myself, um, Matt Penrose and others, you know, we are engaged with the industry. There are discussions at the highest level with government. Uh, I was on a call very recently uh, with the Secretary of State for Bayes, ministers from DWP um, and DEFRA and a number of senior industry representatives. Uh, Michael Gove, the Chancellor of Dutchie Lancaster, also joined that, setting out some of the immediate challenges, but also those facing the chemical sector in the longer term. So please rest assured that, that all of that information is being fed into government to see what longer term solutions are. And very much at a personal level, I want to see where HSE can help you uh, meeting uh, both your regulatory requirements, but most importantly, running your businesses, running your organisations to high levels of environmental uh, and protection standards, but clearly being productive, profitable businesses and anything that I can do as director to assist in that, I will be striving to do so. And a final remark, uh, I'd like you to remember that HSC does have a long history and a good track record of our approach to regulation. We are a proportionate regulator. We do take pragmatic approaches to changes of regulation. And we very much want to work, help and support business, particularly those that are trying their best to comply and need help. And I really want you to have that confidence uh, in us going forward, and I'm sure the environment agencies, that we will be doing our job uh, in, in the way that is expected by society and government but working with you all to achieve what we need to achieve. 